So the webinar we're delivering today, like Paul said, is on speaking and listening and it is quite informal. Um, we're just going to go through categories and how it works. So obviously there's different levels. You've got level one and you've got the level two. Um, we will start the level one criteria and then I'll work through to the level two. Um, any questions, by all means, ask while I'm delivering. So your learning objectives just for this session is to understand both level one and level two criteria for the speaking and listening exams. So your level one, uh, speaking and listening. So the assessment consists of two group discussions. One discussion will be about the topic, which is familiar to the candidate, and the other one will be about a topic which is unfamiliar to the can candidate. So don't worry about choosing your topics. You can obviously choose the one that is familiar to yourself. And if you're struggling on the one that's unfamiliar, um, we can work as tutors, we can work with you, uh, with the learners and find a suitable topic for you. So just little examples, what we've done um, previously in the past is familiar discussions. Um, you can use something like where to go uh, for the end of term celebration. Um, so long as there's a discussion in, in that topic, that'd be brilliant. Um, and an unfamiliar one is should we have a queen? Just something simple and then again a discussion around that topic. So for both discussions in level one, um, the points that we what I've had a look at are to make relevant and extended contributions to discussions because the, these points are is what the examiner, which will be myself and Paul, will um, mark you on these points. So when you when you're delivering, make sure you're allowing your group to input their opinion. So if you're if you've delivered a bit about um, the topic about the Queen, um, your peers around you or you, you know, whoever's in your group, they might give you a bit of intake on what they think um, and try and bounce ideas around the group. So your group probably is not going to be no bigger than three, maybe four or five. Um, and again, we'll go through that structure of how it will work during this time as well. Um, so allow the group to input their opinions, respond to the group's opinion. So if somebody's given their opinion and you think, oh, actually, I can reply to that, by all means do so and start bouncing that discussion around each other. Uh, present information um, and your points very clearly and obviously presenting information and points of you in an appropriate language. If obviously by any any time anyone does have the slip of the tongue and something happens, obviously we have to stop and restart your discussion. Um, and I'll obviously work with previous learners who are a lot younger and it takes so long because they do slip up. So just be careful if that does happen, we'll have to stop your presentation and start again. Um, the sec yeah, I was going to say the second and third points are quite key. So because it's a discussion and they're usually only short, sort of 10 minutes or so, uh, eight, 10 minutes, um, people think because it's a discussion, they've got to talk lots and say lots of things. Well, actually, as you see there, you are marked on the contributions you make, but you're also marked on whether you allow other people to have their opinion and whether you respond to other people. So actually, if somebody says something you agree with, rather than saying the same thing and repeating yourself, you're welcome to say, yes, I mean, that's a really good point. I agree with that. Or uh, well, what Joe said earlier was really useful. I think I, uh, what I would also say is that you might add something to it. So don't feel you've got to sit there and say everything and you've got to be the person who speaks the most. I'm sure Eamon's had examples of had people who talked lots but actually not said anything and then other people who have not said much but their contributions have been really useful and and to me I, I certainly I know we're talking about level one but certainly level two whether they're relevant I don't really care how much you've spoken as long as what you've said is appropriate is relevant yeah. used right language has responded to the other things and it's clear that's a lot more important than you talking for a long time yeah perfect super so the next one is obviously your level two <clears throat> and there is it is quite there's not much difference but there is a, a fair bit of difference so the assessment consists of a group discussion on a topic that is unfamiliar to the candidates and then a presentation on a topic familiar to the candidates so what i mean by that is so your formal discussion obviously you'd have to consider complex information so it's a bit more information than what you'd have delivered in level one so giving relevant convincing convincing or persuasive responses using appropriate language now when you when you're delivering your level two uh, speaking and listening your question if it is a question try and turn it into a statement so at the bottom i have an example so bmw cars are better than mercedes cars that's a statement itself now had there been a question in there you want to persuade your audience to what you what you're trying to say what you're delivering why why are them cars better than another set or why is a makeup brand better than another makeup brand what are you trying to sell to the audience 
So obviously adapt contributions in discussions to suit audience purpose um, and situations, make significant contributions to your discussions, taking a range um, of roles and help move your discussions forward. So don't obviously stay stuck on one, one, one part of this discussion, try and move your own discussion further. So thank you very much. I'll, you know, I, I think that point was really good for whatever reason and keep moving so you don't come to a halt. Um, obviously, when, with it being level two, um, with your discussion, try and put a lot more statistics and facts in and explain why. So as, you, as you're making your notes, when you do go back to, to, to writing your notes on your discussions, try and so what your statement. So at the end of each paragraph or a couple of sentences, put so what next to it. So if you need a bit more uh, writing or something to elaborate on, what is it that you're trying to deliver to your audience? Why do you want them to believe that you are correct in what you're saying? Um, and you'll hit your level two criteria with that. So your context of information for your familiar topic. Um, obviously, you're presenting information and ideas clearly, um, and you're presenting in the same information persuasively to everybody else. So if you have an opinion, um, and you've said it at the very beginning in your statement, your question, um, and your peers are thinking at the beginning, hmm, not too sure about that. At the end of that um, discussion, you want them to to believe what you're saying you want them to change their opinion to actually yeah what you're saying is right that's the aim of, of your of your presentation so obviously introduce the topic um present information and, and ideas clearly add images because when you are doing your um presentations and discussions images quite helps you um move your your speaking and listening quite quite quickly um, and it does take a fair bit of time i mean i've had previous examples where um learners have have had questions about having cannabis legal in the UK and they've obviously shown different types of cannabis and how they're used and rather than having books and books and books of information they've just shown pictures and they've just spoken about pictures and with that being recorded me and obviously Tutor Paul can go back and we can pick up points once we've listened back to the recording because then we have to obviously mark your presentation and to date there's nobody that I've ever failed so it's not they're not difficult but again adding images it does help you move your presentation forward um using statistics and facts is always a good one and try and compare it so don't just use it within the uk whatever your topic is if you can try and compare it internationally and see what other countries are doing about your topic and if it relates of course and if it doesn't that's perfectly fine um give your own point of view so you can start off with say a rhetorical question and again you've hit your level two criteria um, and then maybe you can even start your presentation by saying this is what I think but then at the end of it you can even change your own mind to saying actually I've changed my mind at the end of, at the end of my discussion that's not, that's not a problem either but again you need your, your audience to go one way or another to persuading them um, and then make conclusions and recommendations to why your opinion counts so an that's example a key, of that's a key. Sorry, yeah, uh, sorry, that's quite a key one because I often uh, see that where people will do a presentation and don't necessarily give their opinion or maybe at the start and then don't sum up at the end. And, and we're not talking for a 20 minute conclusion at the end. We're just saying maybe reiterate your key points or go back over your statement that you started with or um, maybe, re maybe reiterate your point of view or something. But that, that conclusion is quite a key thing that, again, yeah. we would expect at level two that maybe not so at level one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, an example of this, and this is a quite big one in a speaking and listening topic. So is abortion right? Yes or no? And again, previously, before um, the reforms took place, they were just questions and it wasn't that much of an issue. And now City and Girls are pushing you to turn that into a statement. Um, so if you do think of a question and you're thinking, oh, I can't turn it into a statement, give us one, me, myself or Paul a shout and we'll try and help you make a statement out of your question. So we from the question we turned it to abortion should be legal in the uk now okay you've told us it should be legal persuade your audience to why and that's when you bring your statistics in your methods you're comparing it to different countries you know why is the rate so low here and why is it so high in another country um and and in some cases you can even bring religion into it and your speaking and listening discussion becomes so intense but so the information is so amazing that people go back and think actually I've learned something rather than just having a discussion which I, I feel myself when I'm listening to them thinking oh wow I didn't know that um, and I've gone back and I've done my own research and it's just knowledge for yourself as well so it's not just just speaking and listening it's it's boosting your own knowledge up as well in essence. One, one thing, we'll, uh, sorry, uh, Eamon, Phil's just asked yeah. a question about the practicality of doing it. We will cover that very shortly. But one thing just to say in terms of your question or your statement is, is if you want to make it relevant, it, it can be on any topic. So if you want to make it relevant to your award, then that's, mm -hmm. that's absolutely fine. It may be that you've done a presentation 
for your course and you can use a bit of that or maybe you've got a presentation coming up and you want to practice a bit of it so if it's relevant to the main course you're doing that's fine but yeah. if you wanted to choose something outside that and you're interested in uh, I don't know any kind of topic you wanted to be you don't, it doesn't have to be specific to to your course we, we're from from Aim and I point of view, we're looking at your communication ability. So I, I, I say this in a bit flippantly, but it's quite true. I don't really care what you're talking about. What I want to know is, can you communicate? So you could be talking about the weather uh, or, or the most boring subject in the world, and I won't uh, say what that might be. But, the most boring <laughs> subject in the world. but if you're putting it over in an interesting way and you're giving information, you're persuading the audience, you're giving your own point of view, you're making conclusions and all that, and speaking clearly and appropriately and all those things again, actually the topic isn't as important as, as your ability to to effectively get over your information. Super. So the next part is a quick video. Is that on your part, um, Paul? Yeah, it is. Um, shall I just take this question from Phil? Because others have probably got the same question about how it takes place. With, yeah, yeah, just can, yeah. We've purposely not really said so far, and, and there is a reason for that, is because it does work different on every contract and for every learner we work with. So as I'm, I'm sure you all appreciate by now, um, you all work in very different sectors, doing very different awards or your awards are all at different levels, although you'll all be doing either level one or, or probably more likely level two functional skills, your main award may be a level two award, it could be a level six or a level seven award. So the, the actual structure to doing it is a little bit different for every person, uh, for every award, and, and so that we meet those criteria. What um, Eamon's gone through there and what we'll, we'll go through now is uh, the more general tips for it. The other problem we've got at the moment is obviously lockdown. Um, so normally, ideally, I should say, the, the way that this, the, the SLC process would work would be, a group would come together, a minimum of three people, like Eamon said before, so three, four, five is usually about right. And we do it all in a session um, that might take an hour or a bit longer than an hour. Um, and we'd, we'd assess maybe five people at once and you'd complete that. Uh, I know for those who um, are University of Wolverhampton learners, what we did, uh, I think it was towards the end of last year, was we had two days solid where you could book onto your session. And I basically sat there and people came and did their, their uh, group assessments with me on a roll in over two days. And we got most people done. Obviously, we can't do that with lockdown. We are able to use technology. So we could do this via um, a system such as this Teams. Um, I have used that before. And, and personally, I, I always find it isn't particularly useful. Um, because you're not, we've got to look at things like your body language and your eye contact, and it's hard to see who you're looking at and what you're looking at, and you might have something in the background distracting you, and that's a bit more difficult. So I try and avoid using technology if we can, but then in the, in the world we're in now, that might be, uh, might be necessary. My sort of thought on that at the moment is unless anybody's urgently due to complete, uh, and I don't think anybody needs to complete by next week, then we'll probably hold off if you haven't done your SLC already, uh, speaking, listening, communication. If you haven't done it already, probably leave it a little bit longer and see what happens with lockdown. And if we can get you together, then we will, because that's always works better. If we're still here and having these discussions in three months time, then obviously we'll probably have to go for um, an IT solution. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit uh, unsure exactly how that will work for now. Yeah, thanks Paul. It is Sorry? I said, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfect. I mean, it is hit and miss, but once you've done your um, your paper bits, so your discussions, your PowerPoint presentations, and you've got everything together, we can then go by how we're going to start delivering it. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, I think one of the things we said about, because we had, I mean, I've had that discussion about running this webinar, because we said at the moment there aren't any SLCs in, but what would be useful is for you to start at least thinking about it now. If you want to get to the stage where you're putting together your thoughts and your PowerPoint presentations, that's great. But at least for now, you're aware of it so that you know that at some point we will do it. Ideal world is one of the things we, we try and get done fairly early, because obviously, although it's an assessed piece, um, it's a bit different to doing a, a, a test on a computer for reading and writing, for example. So ideally, if we can get your speaking list and communication done fairly early in the process, it means we can then focus on, on the actual test. Um, but again, that's not been possible for everybody. Certainly those who have recently joined while we're in lockdown. Um, I said that there's a number of learners who are, this webinar wasn't relevant to because they were able to do that last summer or um, last year at some point to get that done. But obviously, most people on this call have started relatively recently. So therefore, it's not been able to do Super. Perfect. So, and um, we've got a bit. So, what we so so that was why. Um, so that's a short answer of saying I can't tell you exactly how it's going to work. But there's there's the caveat of everybody. We all um, different contracts do it in slightly different ways. And also there's the issue of like right lockdown. One thing we said we can talk about though is there is a presentation element, and so we wanted to give you some tips on that. And if I, I'm hoping if I now share my computer, it will uh, wrestle it back off you. Uh, hopefully, Eamon. Uh, he says famous last words. <laughs> Let's see. 
Um, hopefully people, it says that I'm sharing it, so hopefully that means people can see my screen. We've got a very short video and, and, and there should be some sound on this you'll hear as well. Just about some uh, thoughts about presentations generally. So if I play this for you, it's only very short. Presentation software like PowerPoint and Prezi are designed to aid a presentation, not to be the presentation. That's your job to present. Your slideshow is there to add a visual stimulus to your words. As such, having a slide full of words is pointless. If people can read on the screen, there's really no need for you. And simply reading to your audience what's written on the screen is the ultimate presentation stimulus. Your slides should offer few words and contain visuals which are relevant to and enhance what you're talking about. You can see some useful do's and don'ts in the tabs below this video. Please go and have a look. And we're gonna actually do that for you now. So uh, if I stop sharing, that should give it back to you, Eamon, I think. We may need to share again. Yeah, one second. Is that up on your screens? Uh, it's on my screen now, yeah. Yeah, super. So your do's uh, within your writing, your, your discussions or your um, presentations obviously start strong so with your writing don't like the, pre the little clip just said I won't write it in books and books just to read off it Um, just a few words so you can elaborate on that That'll be brilliant so you need to grab the, re the attention of the audience right from the start uh, use visuals on your slides so keep your word count very minimum and have have visuals on there that will probably support you to speak more than just reading off the slide itself um, keep your content simple and concise. Use uh, the rule of three, so focus on three key points or themes. Tell a story, so make sure your presentation flows. Your three themes are related and can be joined together seamlessly in your presentation, and that'd be brilliant. Um, so using your three tells, tell your audience what you're going to tell them. That's your introduction. Uh, the main part of your presentation is obviously the second part, and then the third part is tell them what, what you've told them. So whatever you've gone over, whatever you've delivered, summarise it and then maybe you can drop your own um, conclusion in that summary as well, uh, what your own opinion in, is of your topic. End strong, so finish on the key message you want your audience to take away. Practice uh, your speaking and listening prior to actually delivering it. So preparation is always key uh, to a successful presentation. If you haven't practiced it, it will show. Um, and again, I, I can obviously say it because I've been teaching for a few years now. It is difficult sometimes just even delivering behind a screen. Um, but eventually, as you start practicing that a couple of times, maybe one, two, three times, you might become more confident in just doing it yourself and you know what you're saying however if you're doing it from the very go and you're thinking oh it's completely fine I'll wing it so some chances are some people can actually wing it however it does it can be difficult so you might sort of staggering and stuttering becoming nervous and then you will just it'll completely flop so please make sure you go through your presentations and your discussions before you actually deliver them um, be enthusiastic when you're speaking. Your audience want you to be good and will respond to your enthusiasm. This is your presentation. This is your show. Take it away. Um, relax, breathe and enjoy it. It's easy to rush through your presentations as the end is obviously true goal. Uh, the presentation itself isn't the goal uh, if you don't enjoy it. But if you don't enjoy it with your audience, to so make sure whatever it is that you're delivering, that you've actually got passion in wanting to talk about it because the more you want to deliver something that you have knowledge about, or even your unfamiliar one that you don't have knowledge about, but you have gone and done your research, it always it always shows when you're actually delivering the work, uh, the presentation itself. And one thing to bear in mind as well, like, and I appreciate, as soon as you say something called a presentation, some people do, do worry about that and don't like presentations. We've said already, it's a group of maybe three, maybe four, possibly five of the maximum people. So we're not talking a large group, probably gonna be people who you've met through your course, um, or maybe not, you may not met them, but we're doing a similar kind of thing to you and you'll all be in the same boat. It won't be that you'll be standing up doing a presentation and everybody isn't. So they're all inside. So I, I've always found these groups very supportive, uh, sort of very engaging with each other. So although it is a call to presentation, don't, don't feel that it, it's going to be standing in a lecture theatre of 200 people. It's a relatively small group. Uh, I, I don't know about Eamon, but when I run them, they're relatively informal for, uh, natures because you can have a chat about it. And if you're really nervous, we'll talk about it first and talk about what you're going to talk, present on. And uh, you'll find that everybody else will be very supportive of you because they've got to do it as well. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 The, the groups are very, they're quite small. Um, that pause there, they are informal um, and they're not 
they normally just flow through because you've, you've gone through and you've read what you're talking about. You do start off a bit nervous and, you know, you're a bit jittery, but as you're going along, it'll be brilliant. You know, you'll, you'll be second nature with it. With it. Um, so you don't, obviously you don't try to get too much into your presentation. There's always a uh, question and answers if people want to know more. Uh, don't have your, don't have most of your presentation on your slide. This should be largely visual so people have to listen to you rather than read the information as you're going along. Um, don't make it too long. Think about how long your audience will want to listen to you um, and how much information they'll be able to absorb. So with my, with the prior learners that I used to deliver to, I used to normally say five to eight minutes for each presentation and discussion. And they did, they looked at me so astonished as if, oh my God, we can't do that. But the minute you start going and the discussions, they probably go longer and they're normally hitting 20, 25 minutes. And I'm like, okay, we need to cut it down. <laughs> let shorten it down a bit. Um, but again, yeah. it, on, I'd full, sorry, I, was, I fully agree with that in that the, yeah. I'd say I'm usually sort of five to eight minutes is right. And despite what people say, it's a lot more common having to say to people, right, I think you might need to sum up now because they've been going on for too long uh, yeah. than, than it used to say, no, you've only done two minutes. But if you think about it, by the time you've stood up and introduced yourself and your topic and maybe gone over what you're talking about, there's probably a minute to a minute and a half gone already. And so you're running down on time quite quickly. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it is. You're more likely to be. Uh, yeah, uh, Hafiz has just said on there, five to eight minutes is never enough. And you're right. You're more likely. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, you're more likely to be looking at the watch, sort of tutting on things because you're carrying on rather than you yeah. haven't said it. Yeah, of course. Uh, it, the time will go so quick, and especially yeah, like I said, if you've got passion for what you're talking about, it, five eight minutes is nothing. Um, yeah. But if you're if you're listening to me and thinking, oh my god, is she for real? Uh, <laughs> don't worry, just give us a shout, and me and Paul will go through it with you. That's not a problem. Yeah. Um, so obviously, don't pre present to the slideshow. Your attention should be on your audience. So get to know what your next slide is, and don't look at it while you're talking to your audience. Again, with the current situation, um, having to deliver it, it might be behind computer screens. Um, just know what you are delivering. So if it is that you've got um, notes by hand, but you've got a few, you know, it's quite minimal on slides, that's perfectly fine. But if you do want your information on slides, that's not a problem either, but try and keep it minimal if you can. Um, don't speak too quickly or read from the prepared notes. Um, it sounds like you're reading them and you're not presenting them. So literally, you don't want to be just there just reading off a PowerPoint or reading off your notes. Try and make it a bit more as if it is just you're speaking to your next door neighbour or some family, just, just a chilled out conversation uh, and a presentation. Don't forget to practice again. Like I said, please go through your notes um, and reread what you are going to deliver. Um, and if anyone is panicking, thinking, oh, I don't want to speak to strangers or I don't really know anyone on my course, by all means, give us a shout. Um, Paul might be able to step in in some of the groups of, yeah. of mine and I might be able to step in on Paul's while he invigilates. So it's nothing's it's not formal in essence where you're going to, you know, you're going to worry yourself about it before you deliver it. it, it they are very informal and I, and I enjoy it. Like I said, I mean, when I've invigilated, I, I take the knowledge back for myself and think, oh, I didn't know that. But, you know, now I do. Yeah, definitely. And I've had uh, everything from from people talking about um, quite high important uh, things to opinions. So I've had people talking about um, uh, breeds of dogs. I had one guy talking about um, the the benefit of playing the trumpet. Um, was really interested and uh, just some interesting things like that. Whereas other people do, uh, I'd say, academic related presentations. Um, yeah. One thing I'm not, I'm not sure whether we say we keep saying the word presentations, and you are presenting. And by presenting, what we mean is you're going to be stood there or sat there talking to other people, and they're going to be listening. If you um, are doing a discussion, that means everybody contributing. But presentation basically means everybody else shuts up and listens to you. <laughs> but you may be thinking of PowerPoint things. You may never use PowerPoint before. You don't have to use PowerPoint. I do usually recommend that having some sort of visual is, is important. You need some sort of visual, but it may be that you've got some props. Uh, as a, a couple of people on this call who work in the healthcare sector, I did have one of the more recent ones I've done. Somebody was talking about the um, evolution of pacemakers and they bought in a pacemaker from 20 years ago. Dummy one, obviously, uh, 20 years ago and then one from 10 years and five years and one now and just showed the size. And she was able to talk about the features and benefits of each one because that's what she worked in and explaining how they are used and how they explain the benefits to um, patients and those kind of things. She didn't have any PowerPoint at all, but there was there was enough visual and enough prompts there that it was a really useful thing. So if you're thinking, I've never done PowerPoint before, I'm not great with it. First of all, we can help you with that if need be, but actually there may be another way to do it that doesn't use uh, a formal PowerPoint or something. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, as long as you've got something there and you know what you are going to deliver, um, don't don't worry about it being like Paul said. It doesn't have to be on PowerPoint. Um, but PowerPoint, like from my point of view, because I do deliver lessons, um, it's probably easier. But again, yeah. if you've got anything like Paul said, prompts, by all means, use them. It's not a problem. 
Phil said it must be easier if we can choose a topic known to us. And, and yeah, definitely, Phil, like I say, it's your choice, but we've, we've got, I'm sure Eamon's the same, we've got hundreds of examples of what people have done before. So yeah. if, we can, if we can offer you anything or you're a bit unsure, that, then please just ask. Um, yeah. And if Lisa's asked about using note cards, cue cards, um, I, again, that'll be absolutely fine. As long as, as Eamon said, if you if you saw the reading off it, that's one that's that's not as beneficial as if you've got some notes and pointers there. Um, I'm sure you've probably all seen presentations before where people are reading things or there's a lot of information on the screen and you just fall asleep. Whereas actually you want fair information because because what the actual delivery of it that's more important. Yeah, yeah, of course. And again, you you want to keep everyone engaged. So if you if you are talking for about ten minutes tops, you want people to be listening to you rather than just there do, do, dozing yeah. off. You know, you want the conversation to be engaged. Um, so don't worry too much about you know panicking again. Like I said, any topics, any questions, by all means, give me a shout, give Paul a shout, and we we can talk to you about it. But um, like I said, cho choose your own topics. It'd be brilliant. Ideally, what we wanted to do now when we first talked about this presentation is we said at the end of it, we can then say, right, so if you'd like to book on for next Tuesday or next Monday or whatever it might be. But uh, obviously, we can't do that at the moment. So really, the takeaway from this is, is think about it. Think about what you would like, to, what you think you would present on. If you want to start pulling stuff together, then that's absolutely fine. But it's more about being aware that it's going to happen at some point and, and, and we can discuss the specifics of exactly how that will happen once we have more idea on, on when that will be available. Yeah, um, and can I just mention if you are doing a power, if you're using PowerPoint for it, don't worry about having so many slides. If you've got mm. enough information, even on say five slides, that's more than enough because you know what you're delivering. So even if you time yourself um, and you know put a couple of seconds in for questions and answering as well, and you've hit that five to eight minutes, that should be perfectly fine. But don't over panic yourself with having to deliver something with 20 pages because that's not what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, and similarly, it's not an IT test, so it doesn't need to be the, the flashiest, most exciting PowerPoint presentation you've ever seen. It needs yeah. to be functional for your presentation. And, and actually, uh, again, you, you've probably all got examples of where you've seen people do very flashy PowerPoint presentations, but don't actually say much. Uh, yeah. It's not as good as having a very basic one, but you say lots of things and it's, it's clear what you were talking about. Yeah, 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 super. Do we have any questions on what we've delivered? Uh, no more yet. If anybody's got any questions, then, then feel free to put your microphone back on or, or ask in the chat.